So, uh, let's take a tour of uh, the collection that's displayed so far. Uh, I got the light out because it's, it's dim down here. It's hard to see, um, at least film. So, I'm not quite sure where where we want to start. Um, and pretty much, well, actually, everything I'm going to point out to you is uh, has been found by us. There's very few stuff in here that hasn't been found by us, like that uh, bookshelf, obviously, the dinosaur egg and the dinosaur uh, stuff from Morocco, the Mosasaur jaw, and then the uh, totus that my uh, dad got me many years ago, which is uber cool, and then uh, the taper tooth and... Uh, uh, calcite clam my uh, very good friend Frank Garcia gave me uh, you know those are pretty much the only things that I'm going to show that we didn't find um, I guess I'll just start here and work my way around uh, these are some marine mammal skulls <clears throat> this is a squalodon um, for those who don't know it's a uh, toothed whale commonly referred to as the shark tooth whale um, when I found this specimen it only had two teeth with it but, uh, you know, you can't complain about that. This is uh, not too common of a find, <laughs> I might say. I was very pleased when I uh, found it. Uh, my good friend uh, Dave Griffith actually uh, helped me carry it out. It was uh, pitch black when we were getting it off the beach. It was, it was fun, but we got it. We got it out, oh, climbing all sorts of trees and stuff. Check out the tooth sockets here. Other side's got them too. Here's a beautiful dolphin skull here. I mean, oh, look at this guy. When I found this, me and my dad had literally been on the beach for not even 10 minutes. We we're in a spot that you don't even collect because we had just gotten there and there was a new big fall lane and I could see the back of the skull. You can see where it's work right there sticking out of the back of the one of the chunks of clay and this tip sticking out of the other one super cool here's another uh, uh, dolphin skull so these are all early early Miocene um, this one's quite interesting when uh, you look at the squasmo here with the uh, tooth that's embedded down there uh, that's not from whatever fed on it. This was uh, in a chunk that's on a, uh, a contact between the uh, Eocene and uh, the early, early Miocene, and there's a lot of rework in there. Obviously, this skull is from the Miocene, but when it sat down on the bottom of that rework layer, some of those teeth and other pebbles lodged themselves up in there. Like you'd see, I think that's a tiger there. Um, this is a really cool... Hadrodelphus jaw with a bunch of teeth as you can see I mean that's that's just so cool check that out when I first came across this it was merely three teeth sitting way out in the base clay on a day when the tide was uber low and uh, that's all I found that day kept it in its spot you know in my mind and probably three years later there was another tide there was a big blowout and wouldn't you know it Joel was sitting right out there with a bunch of the teeth in it I just can't wait for another blowout when I find the skull there's another dolphin jaw here, lower. Yeah, this portion here I put uh, uh, some sealer on. I, I should have tested it before. You know, it was the first time I was using the sealer. I don't like how it changed the color. I like the natural colors. Um, you can see all the little two sockets up in here and up in there. It's another nice uh, dolphin skull. This one's actually... Uh, from the Eastover Formation, which makes it much more uncommon. There's not that much marine mammal material that's come out of the Eastover Formation so far. This is a, a bunch of this stuff here is from out in uh, Nebraska, uh, Legacine uh, land mammal stuff. We have a ranch out that way. Uh, sweet stuff. It's a Titanotheer leg. 
I mean, that's my, my hand. You can see that's like that. Let's see if I can do this. Can you see that? Yeah, it's pretty big. Here's some of the teeth. Nice lower. Look at this upper. That's a, that's a big, big one. They get a lot bigger though. It's a big animal. Some Oreodonts. Basically I've got a uh, bunch of different colored ones. Um, these are quite common in actuality so you can't prep them all out. So you try and prep the different color ones and the nicer ones. And the ones kind of like this one here where you can see how the two structures laid out and how it's laid out over there. It makes it really cool just to be able to look at that, you know what I mean? That's a, that's a really nice specimen. That's a rhino jaw. It's a uh, little squirrel skull right there. That's really cool. If I can't, there you go. This is an ictops. It's an insectivore. And as you can see, it's got a good deal of the skeleton going back, the shoulder blades, some leg bones, some more leg bones, decent amount of the animal there. <clears throat> this is a Hesperscion, an actual uh, true dog from back in the uh, Oligocene. And of course, we all know what this is. Saber cat. Hoplophonius. Awesome. Just awesome. When I found this, I found one teeny piece at the bottom of a hill and climbed up it and found the lower jaw sticking out. And then I dug the rest of it out. Oh, that's awesome. Rhino. This actually uh, is a really nice find. You know, I see uh, not a lot, but a lot more cats than rhinos come out. It's a nice uh, subharak. I mean, it's a beautiful specimen. A little bit of tooth damage right there. No, but hey. I mean, that's a, that's a big skull. I uh, found this probably, uh, I had to be at least three miles from the car. At least three miles. And it was in a chunk that was heavy. I mean, holy crap, this thing had to be 200 pounds. And uh, we, we have big duffel bags that you can kind of put on like backpacks. And you just huff it. And it uh, took me a while to get it out, but I got, I got it out. Luckily uh, for me, uh, Dave and Marco, who were with us, uh, they had so much stuff on that uh, collecting trip as well. They actually had to leave stuff behind. Uh, they left some turtles and some other skulls. But uh, the point I'm making is they were burdened down too as well. So every time I stopped, they pretty much stopped as well. It took us quite a while to walk that distance, but it was well worth it. It's a bunch of turtles tur and tortoises. Some big ones. And then look at the little ones. Look at the little ones. I mean, beautiful. You got tortoises, testudos. You know, that kind of leads us into the reptiles from uh, the Maryland and Virginia area. Here's a beautiful uh, section of crock jaw, galveal sucus. I mean, this is the hinge. Think about that, folks. This is the hinge. And we haven't even gotten to where it connects to the snout. That's a big crock. Look at the size of these. I mean, look at the size. And these are the posterior teeth. That would have been a big crocodile. These are uh, Eocene crocs right here. Um, these are Eosuchus minor. And uh, uh, I want to say Theocampsa, but I'm pretty sure the, uh, that name has been changed recently. Uh, it's hard to keep track of some of these things sometimes when there's so much stuff. Uh, here's a small uh, turtle beak. This is Miocene. Early, early Miocene. 
And here is a Paleocene turtle skull. Check that out. Yeah, this is uh, was written up in a paper by Dr. Uh, Rob Weems of the USGS. He's a real cool guy. Shout out to Rob. Big time into uh, assisting amateurs. Almost forgot to show this turtle. I mean, not turtle, but a uh, bird egg that I got over here. This is from the legacy. Didn't mean to jump around, but realized I forgot to show that. Now this is really cool. This ranks up there with one of the best things I've ever found. Um, you know, you guys in certain places, Gompotherium stuff is, you know, more common. Maryland and Virginia, marine sites, this stuff isn't common at all. To my knowledge, this is the most complete uh, Gompotherium calvertensis ever found. Uh, there currently are casts sitting in several locations. Um, I've got a new piece that I just added to the collection recently that's got to be put into uh, one of the casts. Um, but like here's some uh, two teeth from the lower jaw. Try and get out of the way. There you go. I mean, check that out. Uh, it doesn't, does not get any cooler than that. I mean, seriously. For those of you who don't know what a gompotherium is, it's an elephant, now extinct. And it was an elephant that had tusks. These were uh, put back together by uh, Dr. Weems as well, and uh, we cast these. Need to get these painted so that they don't stand out as well. But, you know, when you're doing the casting of this stuff for the scientific purposes, you need it to stand out. So you have to leave that stuff so you know what's natural and what's not. But this, this is a phenomenal gompathier tip. Uh, not sure how big this tusk would have been. Like I said, I'm not an expert on the elephants. There's some cross hatching in there. But that, that's phenomenal. This is the first piece of the animal that I found is this right here. And I remember finding it at first, I'm like, you know, what is this? I'm not quite sure. I showed it to my dad, you know, and I looked around to see if I could find more pieces, and, and I couldn't. But uh, uh, I showed it to my dad, and we talked about it for a while. I'm like, i got to go back and look. So I went back and looked, and that's when I found the tip. Uh, you know, it was sticking straight down, but it was very close to where this was. I mean, very close. But the, the tip just makes it so much cooler, in my opinion. And uh, then over a progression of probably... Uh, Honestly, it may have been two years. I began to find all sorts of the other different pieces, like different tusk pieces. Uh, these were found on separate dates. These two teeth were found together, and these two teeth were found together. It's, it's kind of interesting because I think this is the first tooth I found. And I danced and danced. Some of you all may have seen the video. It actually might even be on here. And then because I found this one, I started looking around and found this one right in the same area. So when I was there the next time, and this was probably a year later, I found this one. So I said, ha, there's got to be another one here. Just, you know, grins and giggles. So I looked around, looked around, looked around, looked around, looked around, looked around, and then bam, found that one. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. You know, but hey, I'm not complaining. This piece of the lower tusk uh, I found, uh, I was very fortunate in that three people walked right over it and didn't pick it up. I'm not sure that they would have known what it was. They weren't real astute collectors. They probably would have thought it a piece of bone, but I'm excited they didn't find it. And uh, this is the tip of the lower. This is the new piece to the uh, collection. This was actually found by uh, a very good friend of mine, Dave Griffith. Um, and he was kind enough to uh, trade me for it, if I remember. It was a, a peccary jaw and some cow shark teeth that I found while he was down on that trip. Uh, Dave's a really cool guy, you know, this is, this is uh, an awesome find, and that was super cool of him to uh, let me hold on to it to keep this stuff together. And, uh, I guess Meg's, that's where we're at. Everybody's got Meg's, right? You know, some of you diver guys might look at this and go, oh, 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 oh. but you folks from Maryland and Virginia, you know what's up when you look at it. <laughs> you know, this doesn't come easy around here does not come easy around here. We got some buttes in here. Try and stay out of the... That 
That's a beautiful Lee Creeker. Look at the serrations on that. I hope that's focusing. This is a Virginia. Look at that. Yeah, buddy. Look at that color. Look at those serrations. Oh, yeah. Look at that gloss. You know why it's glossy? Because it came right out of the clay. Yeah, but you notice how the root's not glossy or buffed looking. That's because the tooth is not oiled and it hasn't been polished. This is what a natural tooth that's in pristine condition looks like. That, oh, that tooth is so awesome. I love it. This is a honker, too. Look how wide this is. I mean, that's a, that's a honker. That's the first tooth I found over five inches. Was that a, a place after a storm? And uh, a guy ran past me on the beach. Ran right past me. I was like, ah, you know, this is rude. I just, if you don't collect uh, uh, on the beaches, in case you don't know, it's uh, exceptionally rude to pass somebody on the beach who got there before you unless they are going god-awfully slow. It's just, it's just, uh, uh, I don't know, kind of a code of ethics type deal between people who know the deal. If you want to be the first down the beach, you get there before everybody else. You don't get there late and then run down the beach past everybody. If you do, you're a douche and you know it. Alright, anyways, um, but so, I catch up to the guy, he's coming back, <coughs> and he says to me, did you find anything? And I'm like, yeah, and I showed him a, a, a Mako that I have that's just under three inches in one of the drawers in a, a busted mag. And he's like, oh, well, this beach sucks, I'm going somewhere that's better. And I'm like, okay, whatever, I literally took two steps past that, and that big tooth was just laying there. Like, like the guy walked right over it, and I know why he walked over it. Karma's a you-know-what, and that's what he gets for saying that beach sucks. That beach is the bomb. That area is the bomb. Trust me when I say that. Trust this drawer when I say that. Check out this beautiful lower. I mean, that's a dagger. That is an absolute dagger. Some more mags just, just gonna pick out, you know, some of my more faves. Look at the color. What? Are you kidding me? Look at the serrations. Here's another one. Look at the color. I mean, phenomenal. Just, uh, I'm so blessed. So blessed. I've been so blessed. This was another karma tooth. Many, many, many moons ago. I mean, holy crap, many moons ago. I think this is my first four inch tooth. I found this after this, a couple days after that. Um, but I was going to a beach that is, shame it's got that little whack right there, that's, um, it's a long walk. <laughs> it's like a two and a half mile walk or, or something crazy and it's, it's a long way, the sand is soft, you sink, everybody hates the walk. And uh, on the way down there, it was just, it must have been horseshoe crab season or something, I don't know, but there were hundreds of horseshoe crabs all flipped over upside down on the beach. I stopped, flipped every single one of them over on uh, the way down the beach while person after person after person walked past me and then um, get on the beach, not even in the collecting area for five minutes. And to die, oh, I find this beaut. Karma, man. Karma's a good thing. Some of these other buttes back here. That oh, oh gosh. It's a beautiful Lee Creeker. Whites. I don't know how well you can see through this glass, but it's hard for me to get these drawers out. 
whole nother drawer of mags, just mags. Like I said, everybody's got mags, man. Oh, can't believe I didn't show you guys something. I must be uh, losing it to, to not show you guys this one tooth. Hold on, let me cycle through these real quick and get up there. Oh man, that's like one of my best teeth. Like I said, you divers are probably going, ha ha ha, lol, and rolling on the floor, but... Around here, man, this is uh, not tooting my horn, but this isn't bad. All right, then. So what was I just talking about? All right. Outside of this crack on this root, this five-inch tooth from the bay is phenomenal. You're looking at that going, no, it's not. That's got a busted tip, buddy. That's the same thing I thought when I first found it until I picked it up and I looked at it. Look at that. Yeah, buddy. That's what I'm talking about. Look at that pathology. I mean, that is awesome. Look down in that. Hopefully this will focus. Yeah, look at the serrations on this tooth. Flawless. 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 This was another, ha ha, interesting, great story. Hurricane Irene, I think it was. We had to go get the boat out of the marina before the hurricane came through. So, my brother was supposed to work that day. We kind of skeeted out of work, or he did, so did I. We went to the beach, got in the boat. His work calls him, they're like, you have to be here. He's like, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't. So he gets somebody from his work that's like, yeah, I'll fill in for you. So we run down to the beach. We're not even there for, uh, I don't know, 40 minutes. Uh, and he gets called and uh, we have to leave again. But in that 40 minutes, I found that phenomenal tooth. Uh, and the, the, the crazy part is we then get in the boat, go all the way back to the marina, and they call him. They're like, hey, we took care of it. We don't need you here anymore. So what do we do? We go right back to the beach. And we run into this guy down there that, uh, once again, karma. This is a guy I had ran into when I was a young kid <clears throat> on a beach. And I had a beautiful two-inch mako and a beautiful two-inch chub. And I said to the, he's asked me, did you find anything? And I'm like, yeah, this chub and this mako. And he looks at me and goes, I wouldn't have even bothered to wrap those teeth because I had them wrapped in napkins, you know. And I'm like, okay, whatever, buddy. Good luck to you. Have a nice day. He goes, luck? It's got nothing to do with luck, and if it did, I'm the luckiest guy alive because I find all of the teeth. And I'm like, oh my God, whatever, dude. And I just laughed and went on my way. But once again, karma, because he would have found that tooth otherwise. And it's so funny because I had left it in the car when we had dropped, gone back to the marina to the boat and then found out we could come back out, so I was telling him about it. And of course, he didn't believe me. Well, joke's on you, J.E. Ha <laughs> ha, joke's on you. more mags. This drawer, I've got some space in it, so as I'm finding them, I can uh, fill it up, you know. Not going to spend a super lot of time. Look at these. Look at that pathology. Look at that. That's so cool. There's another one here. Check this one out. This was smushed. Something was smushed in there. Oh, sit the den in like that. That's a beaut, wouldn't you say? <laughs> There's a lot of them in here. Like I said, I've been very blessed. Some more mags. I don't think we're going to go through all of those. And more mags. We'll actually look at some of these. Like these posteriors are really cool. This was from a decent sized shark. These rear, rear posteriors, check out this one. This was from a big shark. 
This is an uber, uber rear posterior from a big, big shark. And you know, there's a lot of these small posteriors that float around that people have, and they'll be like, oh yeah, check out this baby Meg. Well, this isn't a baby Meg. This is a small posterior, but this definitely was not a baby Megalodon. The, the teeth, that anterior teeth that had posteriors like this were, a rough guessment, at least this size. At least, if not even bigger. You know, probably bigger. When you're talking baby Megs, you're talking stuff like this. Get this up here. That's a baby Meg. That's a baby Meg. That's a baby Meg. These are anterior teeth. And look at how small they are. There's a, a site that I go to that these come out of. And that makes you wonder if they weren't birthing them there. You never know. This one's controversial to some, but this is a Megalodon symphysial tooth. Not every Meg had symphysial teeth, that is a fact. Actually, most did not, but they most certainly in that lineage, the Atotus lineage, had symphysial teeth. Uh, I've seen them with the Atotus all the way through up to the Meg, so the Ricks, the Angostidans, uh, like this Meg. This was found in uh, Peace River, Florida, actually. And then here's some uh, stuff that people would typically call Hubbles. After Gordon Hubble. Probably Shark Tooth King. Uh, here's some Trubutensis. Um, some of these in here actually could be closely considered Angostidans. Uh, the site that some of these come from is real close to the Oligocene uh, Miocene boundaries. And uh, you get bird, uh, blurred lines with teeth like, uh, like this honker right here. You know, if you go by time scale, it's a Chubutensis. If you go by the big honking cusp on the side of the thing, the narrow blade, <laughs> the thick raised root in the middle, it's more Angostidan-like. <laughs> Some pretty teeth in here. Probably the only one of those that's in here. <laughs> I just found that so long ago. Oh, just some random ones. This tooth right here. See how it's broken in two pieces? I found it complete. I pick it up, I'm looking at it complete, and it breaks in my hand. No joke. Alright, out of there, something. All right, just cleared the uh, uh, memory card so I could do some recording. Moved another light over too, so hopefully things will look a little better. I noticed that uh, on some of the teeth, I didn't get as good of a shot of the serrations as I uh, would have liked. But hey, sure, uh, you don't get a lot of auriculatus where I collect uh, or angostidans. Um, you got to head down south uh, or go to particular places. I guess when I say auriculatus, forgive my language, I actually mean socolovi. Um, you get auriculatus down this way, but technically socolovis are the ones you're popping out of the quarries down in North Carolina with the more fine serrations such as these. See how the fine, finer the serrations are on that? Versus your true auriculatus, which let me pluck... Uh, one that's, hold on, let me see. Yeah, you see how ragged that is? That's much more ragged. Here's a, another one here. Much, much more ragged serrations. Much, much more ra uh, ragged. And um, this here, basically here's another one. Look at how ragged those serrations are in comparison to what we just looked at. Um, this stuff here is all transitional through auriculatus. 
There's a site here that uh, we're fortunate enough, one of the few places in the world where you can find the transition where the Atotus first starts to turn into the uh, 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 Rick, and then, you know, eventually the Meg. And uh, this is one of, I'm not sure if you can see the fine serrations on this tooth or not. Try and get a... Yeah, there you go. I think you can see that. You know, but here's uh, just a whole bunch of different varying, like you saw, serrations all over that tooth. This one's much, much finer. Up near the root, you got them. So you can barely see them up in the crook. Here's another one. This is a shame. Oh, it's a shame they got to eat, man. Oh, it's a shame they got to eat. Bit itself right there, blew the cusp off. But you can see the serrations on that. So, this is all just basically from no serration to serration. And like I said, we're very fortunate to have that site. Uh, here's the Sokolo eyes that I have. A lot of people refer to these as a reculatus, uh, like I was saying earlier. This tooth here is actually uh, has an interesting story behind it. It was collecting in Lafarge many, 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 many years ago. And uh, we had literally just gotten in there. And, uh, you know, when they, you first get let into people, places like that, everybody just shoots off like bolts. Lightning goes everywhere. And, uh, you know, if you're smart, you, you, you hurry uh, to where you want to go, but you take your time, you know, and uh, you make sure you look. So when we were heading down, uh, I was walking, and there was a guy probably about four feet to the left of me, and there was a, a, a mound-type row that he was looking up at as he was walking down. I was actually looking at everything, you know, the mound to the right of me, the ground, the ground, you know, a good place to look, and I happened to see this tooth laying in his path long before he even got to it sat there quietly and waited as he literally walked right over top of it because he was too busy looking at the mound instead of looking at everything and collecting. I just slowly walked up behind him, picked it up, put it in my pocket quietly and walked off. Didn't want to alert him. Is it the best tooth? No. But crap, happy to find it. It's a pathy. Roots busted, but hey. And then here's uh, my measly Angie collection. Uh, shout out to uh, Dewey, uh, Dewey's and uh, Defaz. Uh, they're the ones who put us on to the locations where we got these. So uh, much love to those guys. They're the Black River crew, if you guys don't know. Real cool people. Here's a big old Auriculatus from uh, Maryland. Yep, that's right. Auriculatus from Maryland. Big honker. Let's see, maybe uh, do a couple. Like I said, these are the. These are technically known as Axuaticus, you know. And as you work your way down this way, they tend to get more into the Riculatus. I kind of try and lay them out from least serrated to the most raggedly serrated. are all a totus, a totus obliquus. And technically at this point, uh, megalodons are no longer Cacaracles. They are a totus. The entire lineage has been renamed to a totus. So it's a totus megalodon, a totus auriculatus, a totus obliquus, a totus angostidin. That's what the experts have done. Some of the uh, bigger ones. Unfortunately, the Sites I get these at isn't like Morocco where you're pulling three and four inches all the time. You get close, but not. Some of these, like, this is probably the biggest one I've got right here. You know, you want to get into some pristine condition ones. Actually, I think this has got a little ding to the tip. Yeah, it does. So that is not pristine. <laughs> this is a nice one. This is a really nice one.
Love the color of this tooth. Absolutely love it. Love it, love it, love it. It's another nice one. Yeah, totus are cool, man. He's uh, led to the biggins that we all like to collect. This is just uh, some micro stuff that's still sitting in here. I'm actually in the process of getting a lot of my uh, shark teeth in displays. Uh, most of my species aren't out except for the big ones. I really haven't had much room to put them in, and I'm actually out of room already again. Um, here's some Paleo Cacaradons, though, from the U.S. That's a beaut. Look at that. And my dad's probably got 100, 150 of these things. It's insane. Definitely not rare. This drawer right now is, like I said, the same thing. Here's some uh, Eocene stuff from down south, uh, Rocky Point to be exact. There's a Trigidus fish tooth, uh, some uh, Nebrius teeth, so a nurse shark. Uh, here's some Heterodonus teeth. Um, crushers and anteriors. Uh, what is this? This is more Eocene stuff. Yep, look at all the nurses. This is Eocene from Virginia. This is South Carolina. It's a nice Gallia Cerdo Eagle Soma. Actually, I'm sorry, that's a Aladdin's. What am I saying? That's Aladdin's. All right, now we're going to look at the great whites, but the non serrated great whites. Just as the megalodons have been renamed from Ototus, I mean from Cacaracles to Ototus, Asaurus Hestalis has been renamed from Asaurus Hestalis to Cacaradon Hestalis, since they are the direct ancestor to the modern great white. Um, here's some of my non-serrated great whites, uh, what a lot of you would refer to as Makos. Uh, this tooth right here is my biggest, it's over three. It's not razor sharp, but nobody's going to complain, right? Remember the tooth I was telling you about earlier that I found when the guy ran past me on the one beach that I showed him? This is that Mako. Or Great White, I should say. It's got some little bit of feeding damage right there. But I showed him this, and oh, I'm going to a better beach than that Meg right afterwards, man. It was fantastic. It was fantastic. But, I mean, there's you could just see the colors. Uh, this is a great representation of colors of shark teeth. Just in this drawer alone. Here's some Bakersfield Makos. And then a lot of these are Virginia, Maryland, <clears throat> Lee Creek. Look at this guy. Look at the color of that. Are you kidding me? I mean, are, are you seriously kidding me? I've been so blessed. To have found the stuff that I found, I'm just so blessed. Try and zoom out a little so I can. We don't want to be here all day, or do we? <laughs> just take my time on some of these because they're just beautiful teeth. And I mean, look at the colors, the reds, and the. Like, what, what would you even class? Is that like, is that a white and off white with a, a red? I mean. Like, I mean, this tooth is worn, but like, what color is what color is that? And look at the back, it's completely different. Just, man, there's some spots that I collect, but the, the colors are just phenomenal. Like, check this guy out. Mm. It's tough with the colorful teeth, because they come from, at least at one of the sites from the layer, 
where they uh, kind of get uh, chewed up. It's kind of uh, acidic almost, but as with this one here, you know, you can get them out of that layer in just razor sharp condition. That's a razor sharp tooth. Here's another one that I found actually uh, like four days before that last one I just showed you. I mean, look at that. Oh, man. That's a beautiful tooth. That's another beautiful tooth. <laughs> just beautiful, non serrated great whites. Here's some more. Everything in this drawer is above two inches. Still, just do a little quick run over here. Some more non serrated great whites all over the two inch range. This one's actually uh, came out of a fossil layer and then concreted into a layer on the beach. It's kind of cool. Once again, just the colors of some of the places that I have the privilege to collect. Once again, so blessed. Worked very hard though to be able to access and collect the places that I do and that's one of the things that a lot of you new folks need to understand is, is it takes hard work and a lot of effort to find stuff like this. This, this isn't easy. Uh, you gotta put in time, you gotta put in effort so when you're asking folks, um, and here's some more Makos, uh, oh, hold on. When you're asking folks, you know, where they collect or where they found something, don't get upset when they don't tell you or they give you roundabout because a lot of effort goes into finding sites and to finding, you know, the stuff at those sites. And people are, uh, you know, not willing to give that stuff up to strangers. In this drawer, we have some true Makos. Uh, these are true Asaurus, uh, Deseri. Some might call them Oxyrhynchus. You can see there's not nearly as many of these in the places that I collect as there are the non serrated gray whites. See, now check this out right here. Some people will call this a small peritotus. It's actually not. This is a upper anterior A3 or intermediate position for the uh, asaurus. There's some uh, large, larger teeth. Some pretty big uh, dasaur eyes. These are retroflexus, and uh, they are anatotus retroflexus. They've actually been uh, moved out of the asaurus genus. Um, or yeah, some people uh, are not okay with that. They still believe that uh, this is the pacus or what evolved into the modern pacus. I do not believe that at all. I truly believe that this is uh, the anatotus. This is not a mako. This did not evolve into the pacus. Uh, just these, this, this tooth design. Uh, look at a modern pacus jaw. This tooth is not in it. This tooth is nowhere in a modern pacus jaw. It's, it's nowhere in there. This tooth, look at, look at this, look at the size of this thing. Nowhere is this tooth position in a modern package jaw. It's just, it's not there. But man, this, this tooth is sick. Like, if you collect retroflexus, this, this is a beast. I remember when I found this, man. I, I remember I showed it to my dad and I'm like, I'm like, am I tripping out or is this not the biggest retroflexus you've ever seen in your life? And he's like, yeah, that's the biggest one I've ever seen. I mean, I used to think these things were big, you know? But, uh, I mean, like, and these are decent sized retroflexes for those of you who, who, you know, collect places where they're at. But that's, that's just, and it's insane. It's, look how thin, and, uh, these are beautiful teeth. Like, look at this one here. Look at the, 
Can you see the little serrated cusp down on the edge there? Hopefully that's coming in. Maybe from the back you can see it better. Hmm, maybe not. Oh, well. This next drawer. Here's uh, plainest teeth. Bakersfield, you break stuff. <laughs> I've actually got way more plainest teeth than this. I just haven't bothered to put them in here yet. These are actually Escherai. Um, not a lot of people know you can find them in the Maryland, Virginia, and other places on the East Coast area, but you definitely can. Um, this plate here, I've actually been working on, you know, photographing a bunch of them and trying to get some good pictures of them, but. I mean, these are 100% Escherai position teeth. I mean, look, there's your serrations up there in the corner. Now, the interesting thing with the teeth that are here, and I'm not an expert on the Carcomotus uh, Escherai at this point, um, but I, I find a lot of the teeth that are the that same structural shape, but they are not serrated. They will have side cusps, but no serrations versus, you know, like this tooth where, if I can get it to focus, you can clearly see has serrations on it. And actually they're not serrations, they're crenulations on the carcomotus teeth. I may be mispronouncing that, but they're eyes. I hope you can see that. See if I can find one that's Really, really good. It stands out. Here's one. You should be able to see those clearly. And just another one for grins and giggles. Uh, one of these is uber nice like with really big ones that you can see I'm trying to get you guys here you go can you I hope you can see that it's hard it's hard to see them but trust me they're asherized um surf prey cursors old school makos eocene joints these are from lee creek these are starting to straight, however, they are not Escherai. These are Asaurus, or I'm sorry, Cacaridon Hastilus teeth that are just beginning to serrate. I don't know if you can see it in this picture. Uh, they're wavy up here, but in Lee Creek, Yorktown, you definitely can find that type teeth that is starting to serrate. Most certainly can. Here's another one. Look at it. So it's not just Peru and Chile. Ah, great whites in this area are not found a lot where I collect. These are all from down south, hence why my G Dub collection is kind of weak. But hey, I'm not going to complain. I got a lot of nice stuff. This is probably my best great white. Found this at a place we call Top Secret. Good friend Brian Roberts uh, took me there a couple times. Shout out to him, U.S. Marine. Served our country. Good dude. This one, uh, great white, I found uh, in Greens Mill. Shame the uh, root is missing. And while I'm on the shout outs to United States Marines, uh, I actually found this collecting with uh, Michael Taggart, who was a uh, U.S. Marine as well. This uh, trip, he took us to a Pimp Daddy Cretaceous site. And I mean Pimp Daddy. I probably will uh, pass through the stuff at some point today. And, uh, and then we went to Greens Mill run as well. Uh, so shout out to Michael Taggart. Some uh, Peritotis. This is from Maryland. Early Peritotis. Much smaller. Ding tip. Can't complain. This is an Oligocene Peritotis. 
from South Carolina. Giant Threshers, both serrated and non serrated. Ragged, ragged, ragged. This is probably my best one here. Uh, I don't think that's focusing. Let's try this. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Just beautiful. I hope that focused. <laughs> and here's actually an interior. What? You say what? And then some uh, Cuviers from Lee Creek. Everybody likes Cuviers. Physio Cuvier, Pathologic Cuvier. Really cool Pathologic Cuvier. Hemipristus. There's lots of Hemipristus. This one's uh, sitting upstairs right The empty spots are in the process of photographing. Look at the color of that. Look at that. Oh, look at that. That's a Lee Creeker. I'm in the process of uh, taking some uh, nice quality uh, close up photos of uh, every species of tooth. Uh, that we have to get updated on our website. Look at the color of that. Look at the color of that. Look at the color of that. So that uh, you people can uh, go check them out and, uh, you know, uh, identify them a lot easier. You know, because we had a lot of pictures on the website, but unfortunately not all of them are super high quality. So I want to change that, try and make sure I've got each uh, tooth position up. And I'm just going to go location by location. Obviously, I'll never, uh, or at least anytime soon, get up the hundred, if not thousand, of species of sharks that we have. Um, we'll eventually get there. And then when you factor in the rays and the fish, and the, it just, oof, it's going to take a long time. There's some uh, pathy teeth here. I've actually, interestingly enough, seen a couple... Pathies with the same structure from uh, in the hemipristus that look just like that from other people. There's another one. Well, those are lowers and uppers separated pretty much. Cow sharks. Cow sharks can be difficult because they break. They're very weak. Root structure's thin. They get nice though, I mean. That's... That's really nice. Uh, the color of like... Like this one. Like, uh, half and half. your uh, uppers probably should have arranged the drawer a little better before I uh, started filming some uh, physio uppers or pairs of physio actually and uh, look at that one check these out these are some physios the crazy thing is when I found this tooth I had never found a cow sofizio before, and this is the first one I found. And uh, I was talking to a guy on the beach, and he asked me, he's like, you ever find any uh, uh, cow sofizios down here? And uh, I said, no, I haven't found one yet. And found this later that day. Interesting thing is tide was super, super high, and this was uh, uh, like very, very little, much beach to look at. And this was in the one small spot of beach. It was actually there. That's cool. Is there uh, Hexanchus from the Eocene? 
I mean, not Hexankis, I'm sorry, Notorankis from the ESC, Notorankis Kempe to be exact. These are Hexankis from the ESC, and these are Hexankis Microdon. Uh, these are all from uh, LaForge, South Carolina. That is an Oligocene cow shark tooth. And these are Bakersfield Six Gills, Hexankis Andersonis. These are Hexankis Greasiers, I believe they still are called. Uh, from uh, Lee Creek, shame they're broke, never had much luck with those there. Here is a Bramble from Lee Creek in the uh, Pungo Line Matrix. Here are a bunch more Brambles. Uh, these are from various locations. This is from Bakersfield, California. That is from Maryland, and these are from Lee Creek. Look at that one, and that one, man. This is good stuff, man. Like I said, I've been blessed. Shark verts. Just shark verts. I mean, I don't know what else to say. Shark verts. Shark birds. Oh. Move this out of the way. This is <laughs> this is very heavy. It's actually an archaeocete vertebrae from Rocky Point, North Carolina. That place was such an awesome place, man. Oh my god, this thing probably weighs 30 pounds. No bull crap. Remember having to carry this thing out all oh, was difficult. It was a long way, but well worth it. Ah. All right, now I get the drawer open. Shark verts. Some bigger ones. This one is either a chub or a great white non-serrated, which you would, so I'd say Cacard on Hastalis, which you guys would call a Mako mostly. Um, but anyways, uh, the reason I know that is because of the, the septa and the foramen, but it's too hard to tell the difference because of how much funk is stuck in here like these this this is either a hemipristis or a uh, tiger shark if it were the cocardon hastalis or the uh, uh, meg or chubutensis it would have the septal lines da, 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 here's some fused shark verts these are from uh, uh, lee creek I don't believe these were fused in the animal. I believe this fused because of the pungo lime that they're in. Um, here's two shark verts that are fused together. You can see the, uh, can't even really see the fusion, but the raised area there is where they're together. They're fused so well, but you can see the uh, it's arthrit arthritis or whatever all through there in the cartilage. This is a shark nose, nostril nose. So this is cartilage from the front of the shark. Got a bunch of cartilage running around somewhere. I'm not quite sure. Must be in one of my small containers somewhere. Uh, shark vertebrae. It's a nice string of them. Got uh, another string here that I'm working on that I've got to get set in there. As you can see, it's much bigger. Um, and then here's your Lamb inverts. All right. Guess we'll go up under here real quick and let's look at this real quick. Just busted mags. I mean, busted mags for you people who collect it around here where I collect. You know, it's funny. I always have tell people tell me, "How do you find so many complete teeth?" I don't. You find a lot of busted stuff. <laughs> but a lot of busted stuff. Uh, these are just teeth that have been putting out that <clears throat> uh, predated on themselves. You know, this bit itself here, you know, that sh shite itself here. I'm just getting this stuff organized. Uh, hemipristis. If you want hemipristis, here's hemipristis. This is the most common shark in the area that I live. Hands down. Hemipristis. Oh, 
rest of us. And then non serrated nickels or great whites. I'm starting to build dentition, so I'm separating out all of the the teeth by you know upper, lower, left, right, anterior, posterior, lateral, and then breaking them down from there. Uh, you know, I probably, <laughs> I mean, as you can see, what I've shown you in the drawers and this stuff here and here and the other stuff that you're not going to see, and then between what my dad, I mean, easily. Uh, 10 to 15,000 teeth that we're going to be able to use to build pretty accurate dentitions from the area. I mean, that's what you need to do to build the dentitions. What else do we got under here? We got some uh, broken uh, atotis in here. Yep, that's what this stuff is here. Broken atotis. Uh, these are busted, what would actually be Sokolovis and Ricks from various locations. That's interesting. Uh, micro matrix that I'm searching through. Oh, this is cool. This is a, a crack jaw. Oh, let me get up under this table without messing everything up about it. Check out the uh, tooth right there. And then the whole jaw going all the way down. And then all the way to the back there. And uh, I just got to get this prepped out. But that's really cool. I got some more teeth to this somewhere. Uh, uh, I got them labeled. Here's a uh, uh, baleen whale jaw in here. This, uh, that baleen whale jaw I dug out of the base clay on the bay. Perfect. Hinge all the way to the tip. Perfect. It was sitting out in three feet of water. Crystal clear, calm day. Got it out. Perfect. Three mile walk back to the car. We tried to build you know, like a, a stretcher thing for it with shirts and sticks to stabilize it. Uh, at the time, I was a kid, so I didn't know anything about freaking uh, uh, jacketing or anything like that. So, it's in a bunch of pieces now. Like I said, that was from way back when I was a kid. Like, God, that could be 20, 30 years ago. I mean, no joke. Um, <laughs> but that was a funny story. Cause it, it was all, oh, it was so beautiful. It'll go back together. Uh, hey, that uh, other string of shark verse that I'm waiting to put in is right here. Look at these. Beautiful. All these shark verse strings I found in never any teeth. Some wood. Just some random stuff I gotta put away. A meg that I found. Uh, two separate pieces in two separate days. Crab. Uh, Archie Sea Tooth. Castlehane. Look at that. I mean, not Castle Hain, I'm sorry, uh, Giant Cement. Here we have a, what is a peccary jaw? Both sides, there's one tusk, there's the other tusk, there's the hinges I gotta put back on. Here we have a ray barb. Look how big that is. Shame it's in all these pieces. That's how you get it sometimes. Oh, what do we got here? An auriculatus. Or actually, so close, I should say. Uh, Hexanchus, Microdon. Yeah, buddy. I think there's a nice rick in here somewhere. There should be. Hold on. Yeah, there it is. Remember, this stuff is just stuff that I gotta get put up and put away. I found these two on the same day. That was a great day. I was happy. Uh, what else we got under here? Just random teeth, bones. Uh, that's uh, stuff from... Uh, uh, oh my god, I can't believe I can't think of the name. Uh, I'll come back to that. Nodules, Mason Creek, there you go. Uh, Seretolomia lamnia asheroni. Not, it's a gaffsna. It used to be asheroni. These are gaffsnas. Uncommon teeth from the Eocene of Virginia. Alright, I just uh, 
copied all that uh, videos off and uh, now have more room to do some more videos so we'll keep moving across the room ah this stuff I just gotta put away more cuspid teeth mostly Escher eye you no know, just random stuff different species all sorts of stuff like that <clears throat> ah this is that uh, Cretaceous site that I was telling you about earlier that uh, Mike Taggart took us to man this site was this site was dope I mean there's we found a lot of really good stuff here uh, I don't even think my best plate from there is sitting around here let me see yeah here you go Look at all these little reptile teeth. Look at this two, two hibotus, big old fish tooth, all different plates. I mean, just tons and tons and tons of teeth. <clears throat> when we got there, the water was super high. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm 6'2", and uh, I wasn't able to effectively sift in the area uh, where we needed to dig, nor was my brother or my father. And uh, like I said, Mike Taggart took us there, and he's he's a big guy. You know, he's not like Andre the Giant or anything, but he's bigger than us. And and when I say this, I'm not joking. Dude, literally all day long since he could reach the gravel bed without having to freaking you know suck water in his mouth, literally shoveled all day long for the three of us indoor sifts. Uh, we kept telling him, "Dude, you sure you don't want to clack now, nah, nah, man? I'm good, I'm good." I was so happy to see that towards the end of the day. <coughs> On one of the shovels he pulled up it was a beautiful hadrosaur tooth. Oh, karma in action, man. But yeah, once again, big shout out to uh, Taggart, man. That was that was super cool of him to do that. Uh, just <coughs> Bakersfield, you know, micros. <coughs> when I come back from Bakersfield, I take all the matrix from around my fossils and wash them down, and that's that's what you pull out. And there's so many micro teeth there; it's insane. I mean, just that's. Heterodonis, Squalus, you know, Squatina, uh, Gallirhinus, you know, there's just, just all sorts of different micros. There's Cedarhinus, is what I meant. Uh, just other random stuff I gotta put away, you know. Some Isognoma tree oysters, got some clams, <coughs> pectins. We've got bigger pectins in the other rooms, a lot of shells in here. I'm not gonna go through that for shells. Uh, just Fish material, just fish verts, fish verts, fish verts. It's another Sokoloi from uh, Lafarge. An Arky seat to stay, a nice one. It's just shells from Lee Creeks. Some fish verts from around here. Uh, and this is just clam molds from around here. It's a piece of dookie, fossil dookie, snail mold, pine cone. <clears throat> uh, that's pretty much empty at this point. These are crabs. A lot of crabs. You see the... Yep. There's another big one. There's more crabs. Spider crabs. More crabs. <clears throat> More crabs. You can tell there's a lot of crabs. These all come from the same place. There, there are a lot of them. If you know what you're looking for, you find them. They're, they're everywhere. You could pick them up all day long, <clears throat> but most of them are in concretions that are hard to break. So, you know, at this point, I kind of just pick up the ones that I know are going to be pretty sweet. <clears throat> Let's see what we got here. <clears throat> it's just random Bakersfield stuff. Oh, here is a shark spine really need to glue this back together 
goes there and that goes there. But that's a shark fin spine. That's super cool. It's just a bunch of random stuff from uh, a site that I collect. It's got a bunch of different formations. You can see the Cedarinus gill rakers in there. You know, we got, uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, you think that uh, a two inch uh, Stridolamnia macroda is big, you know, until you find something like this. Uh, I remember this is two and three quarters, a little over, a little under, somewhere right in there, but wow. I mean, that's a massive sand tiger. Massive Stridolamnia. I mean, massive. Please, if you have bigger, show me. Uh, I know one guy who's got one around the same size, and it's in very similar condition to, uh, if I remember correctly, his name is uh, Mason. It's a real nice tooth that he has, too. Not same site, definitely not the same site, but uh, this is just some Eocene teeth. <clears throat> Bird bones. A couple complete ones back there. Not too common around here, especially complete. They get destroyed quite easily. Uh, this is just random teeth from a site. Uh, I think that's what a lot of this stuff is for now on. Yeah, this is Lee Creek teeth here, I think. Yeah, look at the busted bear dotus back there. That's a shame. Jeez. I'm sure someone would put a root on it. Let's see, this, just, uh, this is from a uh, site around here. It was uh, Old Church. They used to let, or a caramel church. They used to let you go in there and dig, but you can see most of the teeth were all. Oh, this is uh, South Carolina stuff. Some more South Carolina stuff. Uh, this is <clears throat> uh, Belgrade stuff. This was from the sandy pit area that had all the white sand in it that they used to let you go in years ago. Hey look, more crabs. Uh, this is from a site around here. Check this out. Some people might think that a paratotus. I believe that uh, A3 deseri, upper. Nebrius, <clears throat> another Nebrius. Sand tigers, a bunch of sand tigers. Sand tigers and sand tigers and sand tigers. And more sand tigers and just other stuff too. <clears throat> like some carcharinids and. Check out that uh, tooth that bit itself back there. See the, in the root? Isn't that cool? There's all sorts of random stuff. Like I say, I gotta get all my shark teeth organized and sorted. There was a unicorn um, fish thing. Uh, this is all Rocky Point back in the day. Rocky Point would be a great place. Uh, what is this? Is it a local place around here? <clears throat> Squally Corox. Uh, what is this? Kiganopsis. This is, uh, ba 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 Greensville Run stuff. There we go. This is Rocky Point. <clears throat> this is an interesting tooth. Very interesting dude. Look at that. Look at that. It's not an atotus. And for those who don't know, Rocky Point is Eocene. This is not an atotus. Atotus wasn't even around at this point. At this point, you're getting the uh, Soka Low Eyes. Um, that's how far into the Eocene it is. So it's late Eocene. Um, almost looked like there might be a nutrient group there, but I don't believe so. I'm not positive. I mean, 
the closest thing that I found from this time period is some teeth that people have classified as Eocene peritotis coming out of Morocco. That's the closest match that I've come up with. I mean, uh, it's just strange. Either way, it's an awesome tooth. I mean, if you think anything else, let me know for sure. Some verts and uh, nautiloids and this is just stuff from uh, Peace River Triangles. <laughs> Ooh, look at that echnoid. This is a less common one. I'm not an expert, but that's what they tell me. Not like rare or anything, but just less common. Stuff from around here, Zymphodilamnia ensises. The best Zymphodilamnia ensis I ever found was an upper anterior, beautiful. And I had it sitting in a bag all by itself because it was so beautiful. And somehow I managed to throw that bag in the trash. I literally dug through four trash bags at least six times looking for that and never found it because it had gone out in the the trash that had gone out right before that. It just, oh, it took me too long to, to realize that it was missing. Ah, oh, it was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. But you can see there's a lot of, a lot of nice teeth in here. Like, yeah, check that out. Haha, <laughs> beautiful cord. Uh, this is <clears throat> Elizabeth Town Trash Dump when you used to be able to collect there. Cretaceous and Miocene stuff you would find there. Florida Turtle Spur. I believe this is a Glyptodont uh, Spur. Not spur, but uh, claw thing. Crab claws. Just, yeah. And uh, this is a legacy in teeth. <clears throat> Nautiloids from Maryland. Yep. Check that guy out. And here's one matrix with the shell and mother of pearl still on it. That's going to be a killer. I've just got to get it prepped out. This is me seeing stuff. Giant piece of turtle. Scoop. Some poo. <clears throat> this is Miocene marine land mammals. In other words, land mammal stuff that was found in marine sediments from my area. Most common stuff is the peccary. Uh, it's not common, but it is the most common land mammal. I showed you the jaw over there earlier. Here's another jaw here. Here's the other species, the giant one. Uh, they're big, well not giant, but they're much bigger as you can tell. Some more tusks, another tusk going with that, another tusk. Um, <clears throat> peccary teeth. Here's a nice uh, uh, dog palette, uh, upper palate. You can see the molars, and uh, as you move up into the front, there's three teeth in there. Uh, this most likely is a new species. I'm uh, waiting to get someone to look at this and something uh, that you'll probably see later. Uh, <clears throat> here's another dog tooth too from the same location. This is from a much bigger species. That's uh... This tooth is really cool. Let's see if I can't get uh... There you go. Yep. Uh, deer tines. It's a piece of agompathere. Two pieces of tooth and two pieces of root. As you can tell, I tore this area apart looking for more of this. You don't get this a lot around here. This was, uh, I was young when this happened. <clears throat> this is all modern horse and, you know, cow, crap like that. This is fossil uh, horse and stuff. Some from Peace River, Florida, some from South Carolina, and some from Virginia. That's right, Virginia, the small red ones. Uh, thresher sharks, just some little threshers. Some cuviers from the area. You know, these are all hammerheads from the area. 
Uh, the stuff is uh, pumice, you know, volcanic rock. Comes floating down the river. It's a whale leg bone that's just sitting up here. Yes, whales have leg bones, at least during this time period. This is something for all you Florida peeps. Here is a, a tuna can with a manatee vert and a dolphin tooth all fused to it. Nothing like pulling a piece of trash out of the Peace River with two fossils stuck to it. Not a tuna can, a sardine can, my bad. <laughs> tigers! Lots and lots of tigers. Some micros. These are Miocene micros. Just getting all this stuff sorted out. I've got to get all of my got to get all of my smaller species finally sorted out. Here's some whale sharks, uh, trachis, you know, cat sharks, stuff like that. Some bullodens, there's some daisyatis, ray teeth. Uh, here's some Bakersfield stuff, you know, heterodonis, squalis, uh, squatinas, some uh, daisyatis up in here. Here's a bunch more stuff from Bakersfield, Squalus, Cedarinus, you know, the whole run of the mill. <clears throat> got to get all the stuff in drawers. I've got some more. I just got to get them built, and but they're already full. You know, I'm out of space once I get them full of uh, some Eocene micros, some more Eocene micros, you know, and some... Uh, uh, gar scales, trigidus teeth, moriocene micros, you know, there's just moriocene micros, uh, paleocene micros here, you know, look, these are uh, paleothocortus clark eyes, some of those are pretty cool, there's some uh, nurse sharks, the Liptoscillium africanums, Heterodonus, Crushers and Anteriors, some Miocene Squalus, I mean uh, Angel Sharks, that's a big one, I remember I was, saw that standing up walking. Just some more stuff. This is uh, da, 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 Paleocene. Some uh, Triacus in here, Gallirhinus, Squatina, Squalus. This is Paleocene as well. Look at the little nut up there. That's kind of cool. The uh, Garfish scales, Paleocene, Ostroderms. Uh, some ray teeth, Hophilophodon terrestris, uh, very uncommon Desiatus from down there, uh, Cupatris uh, worsterzi, some ray scoots. Uh, this is more ray, these are ray teeth. This is more ray stuff. <clears throat> these are all Hophilophodon. Or a hopolo for Don. I'm probably mispronouncing some of this stuff. It's late. I'm getting tired. Some more squalus. These are paleocene. This is all paleocene stuff. There's some uh, paleothocortis. There's some more paleothocortis. <clears throat> yep, that's an interesting tooth. Alright, well that's all the, the teeth that are sitting up top. So I guess we'll get into... <clears throat> these drawers here and uh, see what we got here this is all ray stuff these are eocene ray plates these are paleocene ray plates Check out this pathological ray plate. You see these big ones on the side? They're supposed to be small like those. Never seen one of these like this before. I mean, I'm sure they're out there. I guarantee you they're out there. Just this is the first one I've seen. Some ray barbs. So hard to get these things complete because they can be big. 
Miocene ray plates. As you can see, they're not as common. Miocene ray scoots. These in the barbs are way more common than the plates for some unknown reason. My guess is they got eaten. The plates. Bakersfield ray plate. And this is an associated Miocene ray. I wish it had come with some teeth, but it did not. Or a plate, who knows? I don't know if it was toothed or plated. Look at the scoots. This is super cool. This is all associated material. I used to think that ray verts were all oval, but these clearly are not. But you can clearly see the difference in this and a shark vert. I mean, clearly different structure. Uh, what do we got next? All right, we've got sawfish and uh, chimera. So are ligocene sawfish, more ligocene sawfish, miocene sawfish from Lee Creek, and a miocene sawfish rostral from Virginia. Yes, check that out. Chimera mouth plates. Check this one out. That's a monster. I remember me and my brother <coughs> were walking down the beach. And I said to him, I'd love to find a three-inch fish mouth plate. He said to me, you can't find fish mouth plates that big, you know, jokingly. Literally, two steps later, I picked this up. No joke. It's amazing how often stuff like that happens. This is a chimera uh, fin spine. I don't know if this is going to zoom in well enough for you to, to see that, but that's what that is. That's super cool. And I believe this to be a Miocene chimera mouth plate as well. Just some more sawfish rostrals from the Cretaceous, and these are Eocene sawfish rostrals. All right, now we have some crocodile teeth. All right. These are all Paleocene. You know, some of these are really nice teeth. I mean, you see that? That's a, that's a nice, this is a decent size one. For down there, this is a big one. Just, these things are just nice. Bunch with roots. These are all Miocene. Some of these are honkers. I mean, these aren't like Dinosuchus big or anything, but still, man. And they're nice. I mean, check that out. <laughs> check that out. Doesn't get any better size of this one. This is a good day. I got a big squalodon, squalodon whitmeri, uh, one of the peccary teeth you saw in this tooth in the same day. That was a long time ago. At a place I haven't been to in a long time. Great place. So uh, Florida alligator teeth, crocodile scooch from various locations. And these are Eocene crocodile teeth. These are jaw pieces. It's a snout. These are some Eocene teeth. And these are Eocene teeth as well. Flat. And these flat Eocene ones from this area can be serrated as well. Let's see. Uh, just some snake verts. Eocene. Paleocene, I mean, uh, Pleistocene, and then there's some Mosasaur teeth, and then we got some croc verts and bones and stuff over here, you know, some good stuff. All right, time to copy the video over again. All right, let's get back to this. It's actually light out now, so uh, 
Hopefully we'll be able to see a little better. This is uh, marine mammal stuff. That's what's in here. Start with uh, Bakersfield Aladesmith teeth. Seal teeth from Maryland and Virginia. That's from uh, North Carolina, Lee Creek. Seal jaw. And associated partial upper palate skull. Shane, the whole skull wasn't there. I think it was, and just as the water worked through that area in the base, it washed it out because this was sitting up the other way, so. At some point, if the tide had been out far enough, you know, I would have been able to see that. But unfortunately, it just got worn down, and when it finally exposed, most of it was gone. But I can't complain, because look at the jaw that was left. That hinge, and it's a shame there aren't more teeth. It's the way they go, though. It's another uh, seal uh, jaw piece with tooth, and that's actually an ear bone that was found... Uh, not even an inch from it in some clay, so I'd say they're associated as well. Dugong material from the bay. These pieces are from a site in Virginia. This, of course, is a limb bone. Some nice uh, enamel tip whale teeth from Lee Creek. Shame these wear the way they do. This one's kind of broke too, but typically they wear just like that. These are enamel tip teeth from Maryland. These are from Maryland as well. And these are from uh, Virginia. Some South Carolina teeth. We've got a mix of squalodon and dolphin teeth in here. These type teeth they're actually now saying are uh, dolphin, uh, something Macii, if I remember correctly. Squalodons from uh, Maryland and uh, Lee Creek, North Carolina. Look at that one. It's in, right in the Pungo Matrix. It's nice. Some nice incisors there. The big one down there, that's a Whitmeri. These other ones are Calvertenses, but that's a Whitmeri. premolar there. Some uh, more uh, hadrodelphus type teeth, large uh, dolphin, small whale possibly in here. I've yet to go through and identify all of these things. I know what a good deal of them are, just not all of them. And then you know you have things like you, if you find something like that you'll be like, oh wow that's that's different. Well no, it's actually See how it's this? It's the, one of these with the root that's just worn off and you're left with that. So, Although a lot of these may look different, they're the same. Also just like with position on the mouth as well. But these are, these are nice, you know. Anytime you can find large uh, marine mammal teeth, it's a good day. They're not super common in this area. Here's some uh, archaea seats from uh, down south. This one here is from uh, Lafarge. That's a nice one. There's a couple pieces that were found, actually more than a couple, <laughs> went together really nice considering how many pieces it was. I mean, but that's, that's really cool. This is uh, Rocky Point, North Carolina. This roots were found separate as you can see. Once again, went together great on the one side. And this is Rocky Point as well. Oh, that place was awesome. Uh. This is uh, more marine mammal stuff. This is all uh, Bakersfield stuff once again. <clears throat> some sperm whales and some other different enamel tips and dolphins. Just keep them separate. 
this is all mixed up from around here in Lee Creek. I've got all this stuff cataloged, so I actually probably should separate it out. Uh, I just got to get the catalogs out and match the stuff up. But I mean, most of it, like Lee Creek, Lee Creek, Lee Creek, Lee Creek, most of it you can <laughs> easily tell. These are early um, uh, Miocene. These are definitely uh, cool. Different. So, uh, sperm whale teeth from Maryland and Virginia. Most of the places I collect in Maryland and Virginia don't have. Uh, uh, I'm having a, a, a brain lapse. Uh, Pliocene formation, geez. Uh, so we don't get a lot of the huge whale teeth like you would pull out of Lee Creek as we saw up in the other drawer and then these as well. It's a sperm whale tooth from Lee Creek. There's another one. Some dolphin teeth, smaller guys, and gals, I guess. <laughs> it's an associated set that was found, you know, together. Bunch of teeth just sitting there. Here's a whole bunch of different unique ones. All different species running through here. And you got bottlenose dolphins and dolphin dolphins and just all sorts of different stuff up in here. I really like this guy. It's a wild tooth. Now we move into ear bones. Ear bones are a fun thing to collect because not everybody knows what they are, so a lot of people walk right over them. But these are all, you know, either some type of uh, uh, Adonis seed or Mista seed or baleen or some other type of whale or dolphin or, you know, and when I say dolphin, that's a loose term, obviously. <clears throat> Some of these can get pretty big too. It's a nice, it's a nice periodic. You know, same with that one. And along with the periodics, of course, you have the bullets. These are much, much harder to get complete, just because of their design. I mean, you can get them, though, in good shape. There's another one from uh, Lee Creek. I haven't even cleaned the matrix off of that. That was huh, Block 26B, so you Lee Creekers know how long ago that was. Oh, man, that could be 15 years. Wow. think these other drawers are just pretty much different yeah bones This guy 
Because either this was a super duper duper tiny species or this guy died young. Oh, hey, check this one out. Here's a piece of concretion with part of a probably hinge bone. Uh, it's a piece of a vertebrae here and half of a tooth. See the root? There's a the tip right there. Interesting stuff. <clears throat> These, I think, are just more bones and yeah, different types of you know vertebrae that you can get. Some nice arthritic ones. That had to hurt swimming with that. Or like this. I mean, there would have been another one here and another one here. So, a big section of this animal was arthritic and didn't get around too well. <laughs> Got a bunch of flipper bones and leg bones. It's a, it's a nice sized leg bone. East over formation. It's a big and Decent sized finger bones, some smaller finger bones, more leg bones, flipper bones. Right. <clears throat> Over here, we got fish material, is what we're moving into. This is all uh, drumfish. It's tough to get these things with the teeth. It's just tough. You know, sometimes you can get it where they're worn down to where you see a lot more of the teeth, but it's tough to get the top with all the teeth in it. This one's got a decent few. This is all billfish or marlin material. Vert. Vertebra. Jaws. Check out uh check out the teeth on the lower beaks. See that? It's so cool. Some other lower beaks. And these are from various places, North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, this one. This is impressive. And this is impressive. This is a really nice bill. I hope that's focusing so you can see all of the teeth in that. I mean, this is premier specimen. It's very happy to find that. Another one with some teeth in it, partial, there's a tip. There's two other pieces here, and this is a different one that's not, it doesn't go together like that. And then this, look at this big old boy. Look at that. That's a baseball bat, and it would have been bigger. That was a big, big billfish. Just right out of the east over. Different types of uh, uh, wahoos and kuda and some sturgeon scoots. Uh, Miocene wrasse. These are Miocene tau taugs. These things are actually kind of cool. Got in here. These are all puffer plates from Lee Creek. It's puffer plates from places other than Lee Creek. It's 
These are sunfish pieces. His jaws. So a sunfish beak. That's what all of these actually are. All through here. Uppers, lowers, and different species. Some's are Ranzania, some's are uh, Mobula. And then these are uh, just different bones from them. Skull caps, jugular bones. Also, these things got all sorts of weird bones. Just weird fish. There's uh, Tillies for puffers. And here's some uh, bonita noses, in other words, fish heads, part of a fish head towards the front. There's a bunch of fish jaws and skulls. These are all Lee Creek. Since they're right out of the matrix, you can see a lot more of them tend to have Teeth in them. Excuse me. Take that. This one's from Virginia. That's cool. This is really cool. It's a fish skull. The teeth. Scales. Eye socket. To the top. It's just so cool. And. Here's another fish skull as well. This is a large fish, probably a wahoo. That smaller one may be an undescribed species. They're, uh, we're waiting for a publication to come out that's describing a bunch of stuff from around uh, this time period before we start looking into what that may be because there's no sense to do that before that comes out. It's due out soon from what I understand. Some more jaws. These are from Maryland and Virginia. You know, some of these are decent size. Just various different species. You know, drum, blue, just all sorts of different stuff up in here. Various fish bones, skull parts. And this is all Bakersfield fish. Just keeping it separate, you know. What's this? Uh, here's some fish tails. Some fish spines. It's just various weird fish stuff. Various fish bones. Oh, oh. Alright, now. Now we'll move on over to, I guess, my brother's stuff over here. I'm not going to go through his drawers. Uh, this video will go from like a two hour video to a ten hour video or whatever. It'd just be too long. But here's a bunch of crystals from our ranch. Uh, some crystals from around here. Just some shells and stuff. Uh, big whale leg bone. This big hawk and a piece of petrified wood was found on the river. And we had to carry this thing two miles. We built a raft out of wood we found, sunk it like twice, almost left it like five times. Glad we got it out. <sighs> Gonna need to seal it because it came out of the east over. So there's some uh, stuff that's still kind of, you know, get eaten up because that layer's got some acidity to it. So he might need to seal this. It's starting to flake some more. We'll see. Here's some uh, whale birch from this area. This is a honker. I mean, not the biggest one I've ever seen, but probably the biggest I've seen come from around here. That's for sure. Here's his uh, saber cat, one of them. 
I mean, that's just awesome. This is a Hoplophonius. And I mean, as you can see, there's a good portion of the animal articulated through here. It's piled up on top of itself. This poo was all found in here. It was his last meal. It was scattered throughout. It's kind of cool. Another cat. This is a Dinictus. So that's cool. Here's one of his Oreodonts. And that is his pig. I mean, yeah. I don't think I need to say anything about that. Notice how it's missing the canine here, but how the bone is healed in. He lost that a long time ago. And, uh, the bone then healed back in place and the animal lived for much longer after that. Imagine that guy coming at you. It'd be lunch. Now look at that. Look at that. Doesn't get much better than this, man. That's for sure. That's for sure. Here's some of his uh, titanotheer teeth. Let me try and get the whole shelf in. His jaw. It's got three teeth in it. There's some big teeth. Here's some tito teeth. He put roots on those too. One in section of the upper skull. That's bone. Here's a uh, giant grapefruit size one that he's got. And there's an awesome uh, egg, three dimensional. Look at that. That's so cool. My one down here is deflated. Uh, the one I have upstairs is 3D like that. I don't know if it's going to be as nice. So that's a really nice egg. Here's some of his other stuff, uh, Aspercyon skull, Oreodont, another Oreodont, uh, looks like horse at first glance, and then Oreodonts, more Oreodonts, more Oreodonts, and more Oreodonts, you know, so how many of these things are you going to prep? Turtles. Lots and lots of turtles. Turtles and tortoises are all over. They're all over. It's a big old leg bone. The bunch of the foot. Some more uh, whale vertebrae from here. And once again, all of this uh, legacine stuff is all from out on and around our ranch. Alright, copy that video over. Now let's keep going. Uh, it's just some stuff he's got laying around. Some eggs, uh, just jaws and skull pieces from out in Nebraska. Nautiloids, whale jaws. This is actually pretty cool. Uh, he found one of these pieces and I found the other on separate trips like months apart. I don't remember which was which. I think he found the tip and I found that piece. I, I don't recall exactly, but that's still kind of cool. And then some shell molds and uh, titanotheer teeth. And So that's uh, everything that's out in the display. So I guess we'll go back now and look in the... Uh, 
non-display or what they would call the back rooms. All right, we got a bunch of uh, different just locations. Each of these boxes is just different locations of teeth, you know, different sites that I collect. And you can see some sites I collect collected way more than others. This is all stuff from Lee Creek, you know, for teeth, Makos, all sorts of fish stuff. This is all bones from around here. Pieces of ray plate, pieces of crabs, sunfish bones, fish verts. This box underneath is the same thing with bones and, you know, pieces of uh, artifact and stuff in there. Uh, here's another box that's the same, just all sorts of different stuff from an area and quartz and pieces of bone. This is a part of a whale jaw. That's uh, uh, ear bone that I've got to get put back together. Here's some uh, pieces of ray plates, you know. Uh, let's see. Up here we got... Uh, those are all turtles down there. Uh, those are turtles and skulls and then an oreodon and then more turtles and skulls and this tub is full of stuff and these boxes are all full of stuff but I mean turtle turtle that's a skull that's an oreodon skull turtle turtle that's an oreodon skull that's not in the best shape uh, turtle turtle Turtle, turtle, that's a dinosaur leg. Uh, what do we got over here? This is a probotherium or camel skull. I don't know if you can see that too well. It's probably dark in here. Uh, that is a titan. Let me, hold, let me try and hold this out in the light so maybe you can see the teeth in it. Definitely probotherium skull, upper and lowers. Got to get that prepped. It's a nice titanium here, Bert. Big animals. Uh, up here we got a oreodont skull. You know, here's uh, some teeth from it. Here's a uh, dog skull. Delphinius. That's really cool. Here we've got a Xiphocetus, or type of dolphin, upper or lower. This is Miocene, all that other stuff was a Ligocene, uh, except for the dinosaur leg. Obviously that's, uh, uh, I think, Lance formation, if I remember correctly. Don't quote me on that. Um, but Xiphocetus lowers, it's the two lower jaw going to the snout, and here's the upper snout, or I guess that would be the mandible. See, here's another oreodont skull that's getting prepped out. You can see teeth up in there. Uh, this is a Xiphocetus that we are prepping for a local organization uh, that we do support for. We're going to get it prepped, get it set up there for them, and uh, we're going to do some events with it. And uh, uh, we've currently got two whales sitting in the cliff. Um, One's in pretty good shape, one's in not so good shape uh, at the same location this came from that we're, we're working to get out and uh, once we get them out they'll be set up with this and that'll be pretty cool for them to have uh, you know a couple whales and uh, dolphins on display at their location for the public to see that came from that site. We work with a lot of local uh, organizations in our area in that way. Uh, here's another turtle from out on our ranch. Um, just random stuff, Hemocristus. More hemocrystis. More hemocrystis. Uh, just, you know, more teeth. Just more teeth. All right, that's that back room. Now we're going to come over into this back room. And we'll start. We're just going to randomly. I mean, just. Fish bones, fish bones, ray parts, you know, more, more boxes of bones, and more boxes of bones. You know, here's stuff from uh, the Oligocene, here's the Oreodon skull, see the teeth and there's pieces of it all through there. 
There's more stuff from the Atlantic scene wrapped up in there and there. All of these boxes are wrapped up. I'm not going to go through all of them. Um, if we come over this way, though, we'll see. I uh, got a bunch of stuff up on the shelves here from different trips out. This stop. This is all Legacine stuff. Uh, these are all Oreodont skulls in here. Here's an Oreodont skull. Here's another Oreodont skull. Probably one in that as well. Probably a turtle in that. Um, all these bags are just full of jaws and teeth and you know just different different stuff that I've got to get sorted and and stored. Uh, here's part of a skull. These are more jackets with skulls in them. What's this? this is an Oreo upper. This is uh, Oreo lower. This is an Oreo uh, upper and lower. That's another Oreo. Another Oreo. There's some Oreo verts. There's another Oreo there. Uh, there's more stuff from uh, out that way. More jackets. There's one, two, a bunch of jackets. Foil jackets in here. More jackets here. All of these stuff in here. There's another turtle there. Another Oreodont uh, skull there. That's uh, most of an Oreodont articulated, uh, minus the head and the front and shoulder, so that's a shame. Uh, there's another Oreodont skull in that jacket on top. There's another turtle there. This shelf is really cool. Um, this is from a site in South Dakota. Uh, it's actually a bunch of shelves. This is a uh, short-necked plesiosaur, uh, a very large portion of the animal. You can see uh, the string of verts associated through there, and then, you know, they run all through here. I've got, I don't even remember how many verts, just a lot <laughs> that go together. There's a bunch of pieces down here to it. All these bags are full. These bags in here all of that this bucket is all pieces to it this bucket is all pieces to it it was in a giant concretion nodule and uh, that was all busted up and scattered around but not only do I have a bunch of you know like I said the vertebrae that uh, uh, I mean a bunch and they're they're articulated like I said check it out yeah, that's super cool um, but I've also got large portions of the skull and jaw. See the uh, teeth in there. And the uh, upper and lower jaw there. Here's part of, let me hold this right so I don't drop it. Uh, it's part of the upper snout. <laughs> Starting to split off right there. And like I said, one, two teeth, another two, so there's bound to be more in there. And then, in, I don't want to drop that, that's a very impressive piece. And then in this is part of the front snout, and same with that is part of the snout. So I've got probably another, uh, I don't know, a foot and a half with snout with some teeth in it. So, I mean, that's, that's uber cool. I mean, short neck plesiosaurs, man. It doesn't get any more awesome than that, right? <laughs> Uh, just a bag of bones from around here, verts. It's a big piece of poo from around here. Copper light. That's a big one. That's definitely a big one. This here, as it says, is a croc skull. It's a small one, Eosuchus minor. You uh, folks who collect the uh, Paleocene stuff in Maryland and Virginia, you know those little tiny croc teeth you find that are deeply striated there you go so skulls aren't small I mean because the I've got it all the way back to the back and then here's a little bit of the uh, tip right here that goes here but it was loose so I didn't want to put it in the the jacket because it would have crumbled up so I kept that separately um over here just more random bone you know bone bone micro matrix to search through micro matrix you know, this is all full of micro matrix, micro matrix, micro matrix. So that's all stuff that search for the micro teeth in. Um, 
so that's that out room. So that's pretty much everything that's not on display that's made it downstairs so far. Um, let's look at some of the stuff I've been finding lately that hasn't been cataloged yet. Here's some really sweet turtles. Turtles and tortoises. Like I said, these things are everywhere. You know? So cool. All right. Piles of, uh, <laughs> piles of busted, uh, unserrated great whites that I'm sorting. Here's the stuff I've been finding lately. Collecting has not been the super, super best, but it hasn't been bad. I found some pretty nice stuff, like this uh, uh, Miocene dog jaw. I'm trying to get this looked at by some uh, experts because of the time period that it came from. There's not much uh, known from that. And this, I believe, is a leg bone that goes with it, as this was found basically touching it like that. Some eggs I scooped up recently. This was a decent day. <laughs> I mean, it was a good day, I should say. Some Paleocene hunting. More Paleocene hunting. Ray plates. A lot of ray plates. Arrowhead. Say, yeah. Uh, uh, another mola jaw sunfish, or it could be ranzia. Some more uh, paleocene hunting, some atotis. Yeah, there's a shame it's got to eat. <laughs> there's another shame it's got to eat. There's a crab, really nice one. See all the spikes on the shell. There just some little megs. I believe there's a fish in that nodule. Just got to find the prep into it. It's a bunch of fish material. This was a good day. You know that Meg's got a little wear on the root, but look at those cows. And then check out seal jaw. Seal bone. And even better because the jaw's teeth are kind of worn. Awesome seal tooth. It was a seal of the day. <laughs> Some more stuff I've been finding recently. Uh, you know, Megs, Croc Teeth, Makos, more Megs. You know, this is all Bakersfield stuff. On the trip. Recently took out of there. More Bakersfield stuff. Um, these are all different things from a site that I'm sorting. So once again, just like those big bins downstairs, these are all teeth from one location that I collect. I keep them all separate because that way, you know, you can scientifically use the stuff. Uh, it's just some more random stuff that I've been finding lately. It's a nice whale tooth. You don't get these a lot around here. Uh, here's a, another dolphin skull that I'm working on. This one's uh, not in the best shape. That's how they come sometimes. You know, water just sits there and eats at them when they lay in that base clay out in the river and it just tears them apart. There's another dolphin skull here. This one, <laughs> this one's going to be nice. Uh, it goes all the way back to the condyles. Definitely only a small, small portion of the tip if anything is missing. Lowers are there as well. And what I saw, there were a lot of teeth. A lot of teeth. So that's going to be really cool. <laughs> but as you can see, it's got a long line of stuff before it that's going to be finished to get prepped before it can get prepped. Uh, there's another turtle, uh, another Oreodon skull, another Oreodon skull, some jaws, uh, another turtle there. Uh, there's some more stuff I've been finding recently. It's a uh, Paleocene ray plate. That's nice. So rhino jaw, that's both sides, they go together. I just gotta put it back together. It's a colorful Meg. 
make uh, great whites. Um, it's probably a turtle, my guess. Yep, that's a turtle. See it right there. Turtle. That's an Oreodon, some pectins. This is another dolphin skull. This piece goes down here, but was in a separate chunk of clay, so that's why it's separated. Hopefully it goes back on nicely, but you can see that'll end up being a, a hefty size dolphin skull. I just got so much stuff to prep. Uh, here's a bunch of other stuff from a recent trip. Uh, this was my spring trip to the ranch, I think. Yeah, I mean, here's a skull, 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 skull. Here's another skull. And... <clears throat> horse with lowers. This is the nicest horse's skull I've ever found. It's 100% complete. The only thing that I can see that's that's exposed that I can see that's wrong is a couple of the front incisors have slightly shifted off but will easily be able to be put back in place. You know, because it's all in a chunk so you just glue it in and then work it from there. Um, but besides that it looks like it's it's pristine. So that's awesome. And then uh, I'm sure you can see what that says, cat skull. So that's a, another cat. Uh, once I get this prepped out, that will be added to the collection. This uh, was actually found while I was waiting for this to jacket, or the other way around. No, I found the horse while I was waiting for the cat jacket to harden because it had rained like oh, crazy. So you can't jacket when stuff's really wet. You can't really dig when stuff's really wet. So I'd found this and was just working around in that area <laughs> when I came across that. All right, uh, that's that stuff, so let's go out here now. I don't know how well we'll be able to see out here, but we'll do what we can. We'll do this. Just random bones. But anyways, while we're out here is to some whale jaws. It's a baleen. That's both uh, sides are in here. Um, I'm going to prep it out just like that. They're stuck together. So trying to separate them will we'll kind of muck them up. Uh, here's another whale jaw sitting behind this bedpost that I'm getting ready to take the dump. Uh, here's a turtle back here that unfortunately has a good portion of the turtle missing there which is why it's just sitting out there a bunch more whale verts this is the cranial region to the whale skull that goes with the jaws out there that are associated uh, I have not come across the uh, uh, the snout yet just has a lot of times they separate you know um, I'm not going to complain because I wouldn't have been able to dig and carry that out myself. Uh, here's a, a, a huge turtle that my dad found. And I don't know if you can tell or not, but this thing is black. Once you get that outside stuff prepped off of it all, it's going to be so beautiful. So beautiful. Well, I think that is the end of it. Since I am not able to teleport out to South Dakota and show you, uh, we have a bunch more Legacy land mammal stuff out there right now, turtles and skulls, and also my brother's got a three to three and a half foot Mosasaur skull uh, with lower jaws and teeth uh, currently sitting out there as well. Um, so if I could teleport out there, I'd show you that, but that's pretty much what we got going on, what we got sitting around. Um, so hopefully this will encourage some of you all to go ahead and uh, post some you know, pictures and or videos of your collections as well so we can see what you all got. Um, you know, no collection's too small. Even if you first start a collection, take a picture, put it up. You know, join the group and have some fun. Catch you guys later.